Right friends, uh, very good evening. Uh, welcome to Astra series. This is current affairs of yesterday and today I will also deal it. Today current affairs and yesterday current affairs. This is 26th October current affairs. What is the day today? Is it 27th or 28th? It is 27th, right? Okay. So these are the things which are in short, which are in news. First thing first, CCI slaps fresh file on Google. Competition Commission of India has fined Google for the second time. Last time they fined uh, three days back, four days back, they fined 1338 crore rupees. Again, they have fined 936 crore rupees for misusing its dominant position. Now, what is this misuse of dominant market position? It is very well understood. Say, for example, let me tell you it in a very simple fashion. When you are buying a new mobile handset, when you are buying a new mobile handset, when you open it, there will be already inbuilt apps. Inbuilt apps are not These apps, if you try to uh, remove it, uninstall it, they don't get uninstalled. And if you closely observe the inbuilt apps, say for example, if you are buying an Android phone, Android operating system phone, maximum of the inbuilt apps will be of Google's uh, over Google apps like Google Store, Google uh, Chrome, like Google's uh, YouTube. So this will be inbuilt apps. The second thing is whenever you are going to a Play Store, whenever you are going to a Play Store of Google, what Google will do is it is giving preference only to some apps but it is not giving preference to other apps this is what it is going on in india and google is the largest having largest position in the market and it is abusing it how it is abusing it is promoting one app which is giving them money it is not promoting another apps which are not giving them money at the same time it is promoting its own products in this software and it is not giving a chance for the users to uninstall these apps which means they are making it mandatory as a result this is called misuse of its dominant position in the market so competition commission of india has kept uh, penalty on google this is not important for our understanding but what is important here is for prelims what you have about competition commission of india yesterday when i was discussing this thing called uh, new licensing policy in LPG reforms. I said earlier we have MRTP Act. It was replaced with Competition Commission of India Act in 2003 based on certain committee recommendations. So I want to have an answer those who heard my earlier class. Which committee has recommended to replace MRTP with the CCA? Which committee has recommended MRTP to be replaced with CCA. That is the question, very important question. I covered in uh, economy class. Raghavan committee. Excellent. SSP Raghavan committee recommendations. This is the committee which has recommended CCA. So what is about CCA? CCA is a statutory body established under Competition Commission of India Act. It replaced the MRTP. Third one is it is recommended by SSP Raghavan committee and the fourth term that it is associated is those who use misuse their dominant position in the market dominant position means the position market is captured by one for example geo has been uh, occupied in telecom sector today as a result geo is said to have dominant position in telecom sector so if you are misusing it then cca will find them so these are the important tools for prelims next Sunak pledges to stabilize UK economy. Recently, uh, Indo-American, Indo-Britain Prime Minister was elected as the Prime Minister of uh, Britain. So he was Sunak, Rishi Sunak, as we know this. But the thing is, I'm not bothered about political angle. Uh, for prelims, what they will ask is how India's relation was there with UK as far as economy point is considered. Now let's try to understand that United Kingdom was earlier a part of European Union. European Union is a common market. European Union is a common market. What is common market? Common market comes under the concept of 
free trade agreements free trade agreements in free trade agreements you have the least agreement is free trade agreement the next one preferential trade agreement comprehensive economic partnership agreement comprehensive economic cooperation agreement next one is you have common union and common market so the highest scale of integration happens in common market and european union is an example of common market now what are these things we will discuss when i am discussing wto in appcs you have wto i discuss there so european union is a common market what is common market when you are in an union market will be common what do you mean by that uh, market will be common the uh, something like your land sorry your labor will be freely moved without any visas so visa free movement of labor tax free movement of goods and services all these things will be there so european union was that so european union is not common market common union common union common market tarvata extreme only the common union so it is a common union now uk has exited from european union and that is called brexit britain exit from european union is called brexit now after britain coming out of european union its economy started faltering out it is facing some economic challenges as a result this economic crisis has led to political crisis and that is the reason why too many changes in prime ministers is happening in britain now india and uk economy first thing is india is having trade surplus with uk this is first thing that you have to understand trade surplus by 2022 financial year the exports from india to britain is in blue color that is 10.5 billion dollars the imports are 7 billion dollars as a result we have more exports less imports as a result we have a trade surplus with britain britain is suffering from trade neg uh, negative we are positive in this trade so this is one thing that you have to understand india has trade surplus of about 3.5 billion dollars india has trade deficit highest with china trade is deficit with china this is one thing that you have to understand highest trade deficit is with china now this is not trade deficit you have trade in our favor that is a uh, positive right this is the thing that i wanted to say and india and uk they are trying to enter into fta agreement so far there is no fta agreement we wanted to have fta agreement with uk as a result foreign trade agreement discussion is going on but indians are or indian government is reluctant to have foreign trade agreement because already we have trade surplus so we are not going to get anything with this foreign trade agreement so government is not showing interest in foreign trade agreement with uk nonetheless Uh, an indian becoming the prime minister of britain everyone is expecting that india might agree for foreign trade agreement this side we have to wait and watch how the ball is going to be but the thing is what you have to remember is india has trade surplus of 3.5 billion dollars with usa uk and uk is the major exporter or importer of india services so the major thing is it services of india are exported to united kingdom as a result we have trade surplus so this is the thing that you have to remember so again this is saying the same thing india has a trade surplus of this one leave it it is given in this uh, financial express newspaper so you can just follow that next one there is one thing in news that is called windfall taxes on oil from to take to fetch 40000 crores in financial year now they will ask the term called what is windfall taxes windfall taxes are the taxes imposed by government of india in the year 2022 in the month of june july this year in the month of july our ministry of finance has introduced windfall taxes on domestic crude and export of petroleum products india exports petroleum products i already discussed this so on the petroleum products whatever you are exporting whatever an indian company is exporting petroleum products right so for that and whoever is exporting domestic crude oil the oil that is produced in india whoever is exporting 
they have to give something called taxes they are taxed additionally uh, by indian government now why did they tax additionally the reason is at the global level today the crude oil prices are very very high the global at the global level the crude oil prices are very very high it is around 91.7 billion uh, 7 dollars per barrel per barrel it is costing us around 91.7 dollars now what exactly is say for example you are mukesh ambani and you have oil reserves mumbai oil reserves so you are extracting oil now the oil that is extracted is at a lower price now when you are exporting it to the global market you are getting higher price because at the globe the oil is at 91.7 dollars because of this you are going to have windfall profits windfall profits the profits are said to be unexpected profits in such in the global oil demand is going to come as a result what people are asking is uh, what government it is as you are getting windfall taxes i am going to windfall profits i am going to tax you more so this is the thing hence remember what is windfall tax windfall tax are the taxes which is imposed by ministry of finance on the domestic crude oil importers exporters of petroleum products so exporters pay na petroleum to anti oil the taxes here they have oil taxes that is called windfall taxes and india gained indian government gained just within 4 months 40000 crore rupees from that exports now how still how much how long it will be there until the global oil prices come down to 70 to 75 dollars per barrel this will continue until they will impose the windfall taxes until the barrel price of oil is going to fall to 70 to 75 that is the thing how about look at this no tax will be applicable on the exports from special economic zones right this is the thing again look this is what we heard or we discussed in special economic zones i discussed this concept of export special economic zones so this is not applicable in special economic zones that is the thing that you have to understand so how it started doing it it started introducing a levy of this right so it started reviewing and it is started having a levy of export to diesel 12 rupees ante first 5 rupees collect chesedi ippudu 10 15 rupees collect chestundi leave about this but the thing is this one windfall taxes are a news story that the same sambandhinchi na adige question chance undandi it is related to export of crude oil from india until a barrel price becomes 70 to 75 uh, dollars uh, indian government will continue to keep the so called or uh, taxes on exports that is the thing next one government seeks cog audit of dth providers direct to home providers by the what government started doing is it started initiating cog audit there were some irregularities and discrepancies in dth operators as a result government said that you cog should audit it now what they will ask is about cog controller and auditor general and how it is different with election commission of india i have given this composition of cog cog is a single member body both are constitutional bodies election commission of india and cog cog is discussed in article 147 to 151 of indian constitution election commission of india 324 to 329 of indian constitution right this is the thing it is a single member body it is a three member body cog is right next appointed by president appointed by president the term election commission of india term is not mentioned in constitution by an act of parliament they discussed it and they said this this is 6 or 65 years very very important the term of election commission of india is not mentioned in constitution whereas the term of cog is mentioned in the constitution how can they can be removed they can be removed chief election commissioner and cog can be removed in the similar manner that is in the manner of supreme court judges whereas other election commissioners can be removed by the president upon the consultation of chief election commissioner so in the election commissioner there will be chief chief election commissioner and other election commissioners the only person who have security of tenure is chief election commissioner but the rest of the two election commissioners they do not have the so called security of tenure 
what it means they can be removed by the pleasures of president however president cannot remove them at his whims and fancies he has to consult chief election commissioner this is the thing but to remove chief election commissioner and election commissioner president cannot do it, it has to be done through supreme court or it's to, just in the manner of supreme court judges so that is what you have to understand they submit resignation both of them submit resignation to president no functions simple superintendents direct and control of elections they will conduct elections for parliament state legislature but not the local bodies local bodies you have state election commission and then president and vice president here the function is to audit the public expenditure right that is what they audit and they send report to public account committee of the through the president the other details have a look an election commissioner is eligible for reappointment no restriction on post to retirement which means they can be uh, uh, joining any job after retirement but not eligible for post retirement and not eligible for reappointment this is the difference between cog and election commission so remember this this, this is one important question after this india's first solar powered village is gujarat mudhera village Mudhera is the place where you find this one that is called Sun Temple. This is the Sun Temple at Mudhera, and the village around this has become the first solar-powered village, which means it is net zero energy community. Net zero energy community village is Mudhera. Very important. Remember this. This type of questions may be asked. Now, what is net zero energy emitter? That is the thing. meeting net zero energy community means 100% of the energy needs of this village will be met through solar power but also not only this the households also started contributing excess to transmission grid what do you mean say for example if there is a village you require electricity for that village how electricity is generated normally electricity will be coming through transmission lines right it will be generated through transmission lines and uh, from where electricity comes to these transmission lines there will be some thing called power plants some power plants they will manufacture it how they will prepare it thermal power plants and through that electricity will be generated to a village this is the concept now net zero energy means net zero energy means whatever the needs of the energy is there in this village whatever the energy needs of the village is there that will be met by renewable energy sources itself which means like solar power plants they don't depend on thermal power plant not only this the villages are developing or producing excess of energy as a result as they have excess they are transmitting it to the other places that is what mudhera speciality is so what they will ask is first solar powered village and net zero energy community what is mean by net zero energy community don't confuse net zero energy ante asal energy consume chesko chesko but ledo anna oka meaning anukuntar no that is not the thing net zero emitter means net zero emitter means the uh, whatever the energy needs are there that will be met with solar energy sorry not only solar renewable energy again 24 member irdai panel to develop rural infrastructure insurance irdai is the agency which will be regulating insurances in india irdai the insurance regulatory and development authority of india irdai is this one this is the regulator of all the insurance in india now they want to promote insurance sector in the rural areas as a result they have come up with a 24 member panel now who is the head of that panel that they will ask the head of the panel is thomas m devasiya thomas m devasiya is the head devu nivud betkon devasiya right remember god then you can remember insurance just this one so this type this type of questions will be asked next one next one lower refinancing rate in the work for regional rural banks now what is this lower refinancing rates in the work for regional rural banks what does this mean 
refinancing rates for regional rural banks are getting at a lower price now what is this refinancing rate let me keep it simple say for example you are a student you want to study for that you do not have money what you will do either you will borrow from a lender or you will go to a bank and you will ask the bank sir provide me education loan after getting finishing my education after getting job i will pay you this is one thing similarly a farmer also goes to you might be going to sbi a farmer might go to sbi or a rural bank like andhra pradesh gramina bank so they will go to regional rural banks rrbs now when they go to rrbs right they take the loans but if the farmer are failing to pay back the loans then rrbs will face issue of non performing assets nps will increase as a result there will be one agency which will be guaranteeing that okay don't go into bankruptcy i will come who is that nabard national bank for agriculture and uh, agriculture development so what it will do is agriculture and rural development what it will do is it will refinance refinancing means this one it will not give finance directly to the people but it is a refinancing agency what do i mean by refinancing this is financing if the bank is directly giving to a farmer that is called financing refinancing means an external agency giving to a bank is called refinancing to meet say for example rrbs are not having money they will go to nabard and they will ask the money so nabard also gives at some interest rate it won't give at free now earlier the interest rates were around uh, rrbs were getting around something called 6.6% interest rate so now they wanted to reduce this interest rate so that rrbs will get at a very low price 6.6% interest rate which one now they want to lower it that is the news right lower the refinancing rate so now why the why i have said this who will be the refinancing agency for rrbs nabard second thing nabard won't finance to the farmers directly this is previous year upsc question nabard doesn't uh, directly finance the people it will finance through rrbs that is what you have to understand now ethiopia is in news all for the bad reasons the reason is in ethiopia there is some struggle which is going on there is a place called tigri t a g r a y these type of questions will be asked in the map pointing so in tigri there is some ethnic conflicts because of this the people are starving and there is increase in level of something called malnutrition among the people so tigri and ethiopia is in news so what they will ask is have a look at ethiopia where it is present it is an african country and it is located on the so called the horn of africa if you look at the horn of africa this is called the horn of africa this is somalia zibochi eritrea and then you have something called egypt you also have egypt there so remember these four countries seed s e e d somalia eritrea ethiopia and d d means djibouti these are horn of africa now among this most important thing is ethiopia is a land locked country ethiopia is a land locked country ethiopia is not open to sea very very important among horn of africa which sea which is not open to sea that is called ethiopia in ethiopia you have this problem that is called tigri conflict is going on there are ethnic minorities which are present here as a result the conflict is going on so they will ask this tigray is present here right so in which part it is present ethiopia and it is the borders of eritrea and ethiopia eritrea ethiopia madhya unde border is tigray t a g r a y so it is in the borders of eritrea and ethiopia right so the tigray conflict 
has the potential to pinch Ethiopia hard with freezing Western aid, which means this is going to make Ethiopia government one of the most dangerous thing. Now, in the year 2019, there was one Ethiopian leader. In the year 2019, there was one Ethiopian leader. What he did is he tried to reduce this war. He tried to reconciliate the warring factions. Because of that, they got he got Nobel Prize. Now remember the name. Ethiopia's current leader. He was the current Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Ahmad Abi. Abi Ahmad is the Ethiopian Prime Minister. In the year 2019, he got Nobel Peace Prize for trying to solve this Tigri problem. Nobel Peace Prize, who got? Remember, Abi Ahmad Tigri is in Eritrea Ethiopia borders. Like these things, and Ethiopia is not a, uh, a sea opening country. That is the thing that you have. So, this is the current affairs that you have for yesterday, right? Uh, I'll uh, this is the day and the next one is I'll come out with the current updates of today for a while.